Hey everyone, this is Benjamin. I have a small project I want to share with you. Basically, how to build your own wind turbine. Now, following the high energy prices due to the attack of Russia on Ukraine, um, it really got me thinking and researching, and there's not too much. So I just wanted uh, to give you a way to build your own, maybe bigger, and yeah, just to show the process. Now, while I was editing this video, I realized it's really long. Um, so I'm going to split it up into two parts. Uh, the first part is uh, more theoretical, the foundations, and then the second part is the fun part, uh, more visuals there. So hope that helps. Yeah, have fun watching. Now what parts do we need? First, of course, the rotor itself, which is connected to the generator, an electric motor running in reverse. Um, this one is connected in turn again to an electronic speed control to control the motor speed um, or to brake the motor appropriately. The energy is fed into a battery and the whole ESC is controlled uh, automatically, hopefully someday, but right now manually by some knob. Okay, I think it would be helpful for you to understand what kind of components uh, I'm using here. The ESC is of the type KISS 32 amps. That's a, a speed controller which can do regenerative braking so it can feed in uh, the current, as I said, or the, the power back into the battery. The battery will be a LiPo, lithium polymer, um, 4S, but it can be anything from 3 to 6S. And this controller is a Teensy 4.1. It has some slot for an SD card here. That's where we are going to log on. This is just a normal servo tester. Um, and we are controlling the braking. Yeah, this is the active braking or regenerative braking of the ESC um, with a protocol called D shot. Um, this is kind of advanced digital format um, to control this ESC, and we can both uh, you know control it and we can receive telemetry here. Um, which uh, is very helpful, so we can log all the current and so on. Actually, uh, the current we can't log because uh, this thing, this ESC can only uh, deal with pos positive currents. Anyways, um, <clears throat> so maybe let's talk about the windmill itself. Uh, we want to have around um, 600 uh, RPM and uh, maximum power or power rating uh, of uh, around 50 watts. This is enough to power maybe uh, two laptops, uh, kind of smaller laptops or charge 10 phones at the same time. Uh, it should be plenty of power for um, this demonstration purpose. The diameter um, we can play around with, but uh, here we go with 1.2 meters um, as you'll see. All right, let's go into the design and calculation of the rotor itself. Before designing a rotor blade of the wind turbine, let's have a look at a standard RC propeller first. Now this is a propeller I uh, sewed in half and it's very interesting to look at the different sections of a propeller to actually really understand what is happening there. So let's have a look. This is basically the propeller um, cut up into different sections and I've left some out in the middle just to make it easier to see. This is the tip of the propeller going all the way to the root. And you see how both the angle, blade angle, is flattening out because um, the propeller has higher radial velocity, but also the profile itself is changing. Um, it's basically getting flatter and less curved um, as you go to the end. Now let's have a look at actually a blade of a windmill. 
where things are a little bit different. So here you have a few views. Uh, this is basically the actual axial view um, and the whole wind turbine is turning this way. And this view is um, also important. This basically shows the development from the tip to uh, the root cord. And you see it's, it's twisting along the way, looking from the tip to the, to the root. Now, uh, our main question is what is the optimal um, blade uh, untwisted cord okay you can you, you can uh, say this is C and then let's say what is you know here we have a small C um, maybe this is the C tip and this is the C root what is the C of R and R we define here as the uh, radial uh, distance from the hub okay so uh, as you might know, since we are in a rotating frame, the, uh, the rotation will induce some velocities on the blade. So we will have uh, these radial velocities on each section, blade section, and um, we call this the wind due to rotation VR, okay? Um, or the velocity due to rotation. And then of course we have the actual um, the actual wind speed, which we can maybe just call uh, V wind, okay? And just, uh, we can't go too far into detail, but a, a short uh, introduction to what is actually happening here on the blade. And for this, we are going to have a look at the root um, cord here. And uh, I will just draw a profile because as you might know, these windmills also, um, you know, they are made out of airfoil shapes, these sections. This is basically how the whole thing would uh, look if you cut it open. As we just saw in the video, if you cut a windmill open, this is what you would see at the root cord. The wind speed is coming, the, the wind is coming from this direction, okay? This is the velocity of the wind. Now, since the thing is rotating, as we saw, we also have a radial velocity, okay? Induced, and we call this VR. If you have these two velocities, you can uh, vectorize, well, you can add these vectors together, and what you'll get is some uh, vector maybe like this. This is just called, let's just call it V. Um, but these induce some lift and drag. Okay, somewhere around uh, here, the the lift will be, and it's it's perpendicular to the velocity. Okay, this is important. Now um, let's call this lift. Okay, and we also have a small component um, called drag. We do have some drag, but we are not really concerned with that at the moment. Now, what you can do is again decompose uh, this vector into one. Um, part of the vector, which is this direction, and you have another one um, in this direction. Let me quickly draw them here. So we have one along this axis, and let's call it L thrust because this is causing some um, drag or thrust on the actual structure which, which the windmill is sitting on. And then we have another component of the lift which is the actual desired lift along the radial direction of our rotor. And this is really what we want. Um, this force is uh, inducing a torque. And uh, if we uh, get the generator attached, then we can actually uh, draw out some power from the system. And uh, there we are, we have our windmill. The next task is to find out what is uh, the best uh, distribution of the angle of these different sections and the best distribution of the cord length C. And so I've quickly drawn this in here. Um, basically we want to find the best C of R, R being again the radial um, uh, component or direction. Uh, for a certain operating point, let's say a certain wind speed, we're uh, expecting and we want to maximize over the power. 
So this is really the optimization problem we want to solve. This is the website of Xrotor. You can Google it. It's written by Mark Drila, uh, similar to AVL and Xfoil. And you see here, it's for the design of a minimal induced loss propeller um, or windmill. And you can go through here. Basically, here you can download the software. Um, and it's very similar to the Cubeprop software. And if you go there, um, you can see uh, there's also a lot of documents uh, you can go through and basically they explain how this thing works. Um, I'm going to show a really brief overview how to design your own rotor. Once you open the program in a terminal, um, you see this. And this is basically giving you all the options you can select from. And we want to design a rotor, so we type in DESI. Only the first uh, four characters matter. And it will take you through all the process. So um, to input your data, you just type input. Um, and then the number of blades. Uh, we actually want two, but let's say three here for an example. The tip radius. Um, and, and all these things, you basically type them in um, and then the program will do the optimal. You can select from a few different options, but uh, it will find the minimal uh, induced loss um, design point and then output a geometry, which is um, well optimal for that. Uh, these inputs you specified. All right, I want to quickly speak about the minimal induced loss design point. And uh, to illustrate this point, let's actually try um, and understand what's going on on a standard wing first. So let's give it a middle line here. And then we have this is one side of the wing and this is the other side of a standard wing. And um, as we know, the perfect shape of this wing is an elliptical shape. And now let's have a look at the lift distribution, basically how much lift is generated per, per span. Uh, and if we do that, let's get this uh, lift, lift distribution in here. Um, we will have this kind of similar elliptical uh, bell curve shape. This is the optimal lift distribution, yeah? So you have uh, all these forces here and we can specify this as CL of S and then let's just have S run from here. Okay, so this is the, uh, the case for a wing. The main difference is becoming clear if we look at the wind speed, of course, for a wing um, of an airplane flying straight, we have a similar airspeed for, or kind of similar for all the different uh, span, span wise sections. Now let's have a look at the uh, rotor. Let's actually, actually just look at one rotor blade. Um, and let me just draw in kind of arbitrary shape for a rotor. Um, and let's actually look at the wind speed here again, the induced wind speed. Um, it is a triangle shape. We had this before. So we have different speeds along the radial stations. Uh, of course, at the tip, we have the highest speeds. And we still know that uh, aerodynamically, the best shape would be an ellipse. And so if we draw the rotor blade again, well, now we are basically looking at the flat blade. Let's just have it this way. Um, and it's, let's say it's untwisted. What would be the optimal um, lift distribution? We know here we need to have zero lift at the tip as well, because that's where our body ends. And then again, we have the optimal lift distribution um, is an ellipse in here. So we would have all these sections which generate the uh, corresponding lift and going back now from this design point um, 
here, we can actually figure out, uh, if we're smart, um, how the shape should be in order for this lift distribution um, to be optimal given these different velocities here. So we basically we can find uh, C of R and let's recount it's basically this is C um, and we can find a beta of R uh, and this is of course R, R is running from here um, to the tip. Uh, a beta is the ang blade angle. It's how the blade changes, um, you know, over over the radial station. Okay, this is it. I uh, hope this minimal induced uh, loss design point is a little bit clearer for the rotor. It's basically elliptical lift distribution for the rotor, but uh, we have more advanced aerodynamic characteristics for this rotating blade and. Um, basically the twist in here. All right, now that we know what the minimal induced design point is, let's input uh, our parameters and see where we're going. Now once you uh, typed in all your inputs, um, basically with another command you can run the calculation and there you see the different radial stations and what the program calculated for beta, meaning the, the blade angle and the chord and then you can ask the program to output um, this familiar file here um, just as a reference uh, and of course also all the numerical values. And now we will uh, have a look at how to actually design um, this complicated three-dimensional shape.